Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Average Trader here. And welcome back to another week of watching me trying to trade my way through this complete shit show of a market that we have at the moment. I've got a good video for you today, this week, guys. Uh, got a couple of trade ideas that I want to go through with you for the week ahead. A couple of news stories which I wanted to share, which I thought were important. Um, but the main part of this week's video, guys, is something a little bit different. Uh, something I want to talk about, a bit of an idea that I have, sort of a theory, let's say, about what's going to happen in the stock market going forward into the end of this year and probably... Uh, further into the future than that as well. Now, I know nor no, I don't normally talk about the stock market. I trade Forex. I'm primarily a Forex trader, but I always pay attention to what's going on in the stock markets, guys. It's important. The stock market has, has an effect on the FX markets, obviously, so it's always good to pay attention to what's going on in the stock market, it, you know, for sentiment and things like that. So I always pay attention to the stock market, and this is a kind of a theory that I've kind of generated from that. Now, I do want to say before I tell you the idea, guys, I'm not an economist. I'm just a guy who's trading... You know retail trader at home with a few thousand dollars trading and i've just kind of picked up on a few things and i've come up with an idea here so this is a very rough idea i'm sure there'll be a lot of people who have comments about it and stuff like that if you want to comment or you want to question whatever it is throw it down in the comment section below i'll be happy to talk about it with you guys uh, i'd appreciate it if you like the video as well if you'd like to subscribe that'd be great thanks very much so what is my idea well we've all heard about uh in you know in the financial media on CNBC and Bloomberg and all these channels and you know on Twitter what's the recovery going to be how's how are we going to recover from the coronavirus crash is it going to be v-shape is it going to be an l-shape is it going to be a w is it going to be a fucking zigzag who, who knows you know every this is what people have been talking about now everybody seems to have finally jumped on the bandwagon now that it's the v the v is in we've got the v-shape recovery you know we went down we got the lows in March and we've pretty much gone straight back up. S&P 500 is about here at the moment. NASDAQ is up here. So people think this is it. This is the V. We've got the V. Now, my theory is that I don't believe that. I don't believe this is a V. I don't believe it's going to be, you know, that we just continue on here now to uh, infinity and beyond. And it's happy days and uh, the, 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 the crash is over. I just, I don't buy it. I don't believe it. So what is my theory? My theory is, I call it the V swoosh. <laughs> the V swoosh, right? I know it's a stupid name, but it's the best I could come up with because it was just easy. So this is the V swoosh. So I believe that we're back here now. And I think, uh, you know, if we do get a correction, if we do get a, a pullback here, I think people are going to jump on the W bandwagon that we might get, you know, the W. But I don't think we're going to get the W. I think what we're going to get is a move back down probably to these lows maybe we could even go lower who knows but eventually we're going to get this kind of a movement back up so this is the v and this is the swoosh think of it like a nike nike swoosh that's the way i look at it so why do i say this is going to happen well first of all we have to ask the question why are the markets going to come back down from here why would the markets go back down to these lows why do we get a pullback why do we get a correction why do we get any sort of movement back down towards these lows or lower well the reason for that is because i firmly believe that we are now in a bubble a, we're in bubble territory we might be in a, even a stock um, sort of a mania almost at the moment i mean you look at what's happening you, you can see you know you don't have to look too far guys you look on Twitter, you know, buy the dip, the Fed's got our back, you know, all this kind of stuff, buy stocks at crazy valuations, just keep buy, 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 buy every pullback there is because, you know, it's just going to keep, you know, it, stocks net, what's this new one? Stocks always go up. Dave Portnoy says stocks always go up. Okay, right. That's not true. We know that's not true. So what are we in a bubble? Okay, well, let's see. Are we in a bubble? How, how do we, how can we tell we're in a bubble? Well, Here's some features, typical features of a bubble. Feature number one, extreme optimism about future profits. Do we have that in the markets at the moment? Yes. Heavy flows into stocks without regard to valuations. Do we see that in the stock market? Absolutely. New share issuance, issuances. Are we seeing companies giving, releasing new shares into the market now to take advantage of the elevated stock prices? Yes, we are. I mean. No better example than Hertz. Have a look at Hertz issue, trying to issue shares after the bankruptcy. They claim bankruptcy or they filed for bankruptcy. Those shares are worthless and the company is essentially bankrupt. So how is that going to 
you know that money would just go into the the, the, the hands of the bondholders and then the company still go bankrupt it's crazy crazy stuff guys anyway i won't go on about that for too long but have a look at this here this is a chart of the real gross domestic profit uh sorry product which is basically uh nominal gdp corrected for inflation okay and then this is the wilshire 5000 uh, full cap price index okay so this is the the stock market uh, valuation let's say overall so look where we are at the moment guys Look what happened here. So this is the Nasdaq bubble in 2000, right? We went above this this line here. We went above. We got we got above the real GDP, and we had a correction. 2007, we stuck our head above the red line again. Correction. Now we're all the way up here. I mean, we're at about in terms of real GDP, we're at a market value of about 160 percent of real GDP at the moment. That is the most overvalued stock market, basically ever. Okay, so. This is, this, this is unsustainable. We're in unsustainable valuation territory. And look, guys, I know all the arguments, the Fed, the, liquid, the, the liquidity, the $3 trillion, it has to go somewhere. There's nowhere else to get a return on your money. Bonds are shit. Savings accounts are shit. I get it. I know the money has to go somewhere. But at the end of the day, guys, stocks cannot continue to go up forever and ever and ever. And there's going to be a correction. Now, I will say, guys, I'm not telling anybody to short this market right now. I'm not saying short the S&P 500 because if you do, you're standing in front of a train and you're going to get burned probably now if you want to trade it with you know proper risk management then go for it you know work away but i just think you know i'm not saying i'm not calling it top here but i do believe that when we do get a correction it could be accelerated and we could end up back down at the lows so what other reasons do i think are um indicative of the fact that we're in a bubble well we have incredible speculation in the markets now i mean the specula speculative speculation taking place in the market that i've never seen before i mean you know again hurts people buying shares and hurts even though the company's bankrupt crazy stuff look at a company like nicola the, the electric uh, truck company i mean they haven't even you know sold a single truck yet and you know they're up 670 percent in the last three months they're up at 67 dollars they were trading 10 dollars in april you know crazy there's crazy speculation in the market right now i mean it's it's everywhere i don't need to give you examples you'll see it you know just look at any stock chart at the moment basically um especially in tech i mean tech charts obviously that's that's the big area where there's a lot of speculation at the moment uh so yeah we have this incredible sort of speculation that's fueling this we also have this uh this thing with the retail traders okay so I, what I, I believe is that retail traders in particular now have been sort of conditioned by the crash in 2008 to believe that stocks you know you, you buy the dip you buy the crash and you're going to get rich you know look i'm going to bring this chart back here to uh let me see let me just one sec so here's a chart from the 2009 financial crisis okay so you know there was extreme pessimism in this market when when the collapse happened back then it was like financial armageddon you know they thought the financial system might collapse uh you know you had banks going under you had you know lehman brothers you know 100 and something year old institution going under i mean it was it was crazy stuff you know, there was blood on the streets as they say and you know basically whoever bought down here whoever had the guts to buy down here got stinking rich because look what happened you know look at this rally that happened for the last decade i mean you know it's incredible and i think what's happened here is that retail traders uh you know younger sort of retail traders have been kind of conditioned to believe that you know this is this is a, a once in a lifetime our buying opportunity we have the coronavirus crash you know the s p's pulled back 30 percent 40 percent whatever it was like i don't know the exact number and people are just like right we've got to jump on now because this is it this is the generational buying opportunity i'm going to get rich because they just think that maybe you know what happened in 2008 is going to happen again you just you know you buy it at the worst possible time and bingo you know you're rich and um, i know that sounds you know it's a simple way of putting it guys but i'm just you know i'm just trying to rationalize what i'm seeing here okay so let's talk about where we are now then right so we've 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 had a huge pullback from 3400 down to 2200 around that area where we bottomed out in march and then we've had this incredible rally all the way back up to the highs of 
3,250 or so before we've kind of gone sideways for the last week or two. Now guys, what, what I, my understanding is that a lot of institutional investors did not get this bottom. They didn't see it as being a situation where we hit, we hit this once and we went you know, directly back up to uh, all time highs again. Uh, I, I don't think many people did, but of course, apparently retail traders did. They seen this and they said, hey, look what happened in 2008 you know this is this is the way forward you know this is it this is our entry into the market this is how we're going to get long and we're going to ride this thing all the way up to five thousand dollars maybe who knows so why do i think we're going to get a correction now that's the next thing okay well first of all bubbles always pop okay whether it pops here or we go to four thousand before it pops i don't know but you know it's going to pop at some point because we have unrealistic valuations here and there is no firm ground below this rally, okay? So th this will pop and, you know, it's, it's, it's inevitable at some point, okay? And we have to look at the, the reality of what's taking place at the moment. And we have, you know, unemployment that we haven't had, we haven't seen in 100 years. Or we've got 40 million Americans unemployed. We have, you know, Europe is the same. We've got millions and millions of people unemployed in, in Europe. Uh, we have a, still have an active pandemic going on that we don't have an answer for yet. We don't have a cure. We don't have a, a vaccine. Um, I mean, when we're still seeing the market, uh, the conditions, the financial, uh, sorry, economic conditions are still deteriorating because look what happened. America reopened five weeks ago. Okay. They started the reopening five weeks ago, but just last Thursday, they announced that 1.5 million more people had signed up for unemployment in, in that week. So, I mean, things are not improving. If we're five weeks into the reopening and we're still losing 1.5 million jobs, then is the reopening trade, you know, is it validated? I don't know. So at some point we're going to see a sell off in this market. Uh, what's going to cause it? I don't know. I said, I'm not telling you to trade it right now, but we will see a sell off. And when we see the sell off, the fear that I have is that this, you know, can spiral, let's say, because as I said, you know, there, there is no firm, firm, firm ground below this. this. This whole rally is built on hopium, you know, optimism, the reopening. Nothing actual, tangible, fundamental basis for why we are up here other than the fact that the Fed has given a load of free money away. That's it. There's hope and there's the Fed. And that's the only reason for this has happened because without that, we're not here, you know. So there is no firm ground below this. And I think that you know we're riding this wave of optimism now this wave of like you know we can go you know to all-time highs we can go to new highs we're back on the gravy train everything is good again but if the sentiment shifts slightly then you know that can turn to you know a little bit of fear and a little bit of fear in this type of market is a dangerous thing because fear can really get out of control fast because if we start to see a little bit of doubt in the bulls minds that you know this might actually start to come back on us here a little bit. We could see some people cashing out of their positions and that can lead to a, a snowball effect, you know? Um, so look, I think we're going to get a pullback in this market. I don't know where it's going to lead to, where we're going to bottom out, but I do think we're, you know, we're going to come back to reality at some point. Okay. We're going to, you know, reality is going to sink in and we're going to have another, um, correction. So why do I say that it's not going to be a, a W? Why do I think that, you know, we get maybe, I don't know, whatever it is that causes the second wave of coronavirus, let's say, causes this, this second pullback. Why do I say that we're not going to get, you know, the typical W? Why do, why do I think that we're not going to go back down to here or here and then eventually, you know, the market just gets bought back up? Or why, why do I think we'll stop here or here or even? Why do I say that we'll stop here? Well, first of all, I don't think we're going to see a sell off like you know back to like 15 1600 on the s p now i could be wrong on this and i know i'm i'm <laughs> i'm trying to predict a lot here okay but i i have reasons for that so i don't think we're going to see the s p back at 15 1600 dollars because simply just because of the amount of liquidity that is in the market i don't think we're going to go back that far and i don't think that there's anywhere else for people to really put their money at the moment i mean you don't get a return in the bond market, really. You don't get a return in your savings account because we're at zero or negative interest rates in a lot of countries now. Um, you know, where where is where do you put your money that you get a return on investment? I don't know. The so stock market still offers that, I think. So you're still going to see, 
you know, interest here, but I don't think you're going to see, you know, 15, 1600 print on the S and P. Let's see what happens. Um, the question then is when we get down here, why don't I think we're going to bounce back in a hurry? Like, why are we not just going to go straight back up to all time highs? Why, why does it become when we get to here, we get a virus cure or we get a therapy or whatever, some sort of good news that turns the market around. Why do I not think we're just going to go straight back up mooning back to, to all time highs? And the reason for that, that, the reason why I think we end up with this shape is because of optimism, or not optimism, sorry, uh, confidence, okay? I think confidence gets eroded, okay? The V-shape recovery is the, the sort of the hinge on which confidence is balanced on, okay? We, we get the V-shape recovery, people are buying into the idea here, uh, they, you know, they're on the gravy train, we're going back to make new highs, everybody's getting rich all aboard, okay? This changes that. If we go back down again, the confidence is eroded, okay? The retail traders are not gonna to wanna to jump back in here on some speculative binge that we're gonna go back up to, to all time highs, you know, in three months time. I, I don't think so anyway. And also you're gonna have an awful lot of people who are gonna get burned badly by this pullback, by this correction. So what happens is we get a sell off, we get fear, we get eventually capitulation and at that point we may end up going lower than the previous low where capitulation happens i don't know but we will get pitch capitulation at some point and that will be the buy signal for the smart money the smart money will then come in and slowly but surely buy this market all the way back up and we'll eventually end up wherever who knows somewhere higher than where we are now anyway let's put it that way so that is my theory guys that is the reason why i think going to go in that shape i don't think this is sustainable i don't think this rally can last forever i think it's another bubble you know there's all the signs of a bubble here guys um market cap to gdp crazy speculation frenzied buying share issuances um the mantra oh, you know this, this pe people saying things like it's different this time the fed has our back you know it, the rug will be pulled at some point okay everybody knows that the rug will be pulled at some point so that's that's my play guys that's the way i'm looking at it i'm not trading this myself i don't really trade the s p 500 i don't trade stocks an awful lot um if i see something that's really good yeah i might i might take something but I, you know this is just kind of an idea that i have i want to get your feedback if you if you have some ideas on it if you've got some sort of uh if i've got this completely wrong and there's no way this can happen i'm sure glad to hear about that and you know, you can tell me where I went wrong in the comment section down below, but that's basically my idea, guys. So I'd like to hear what you have on that. Uh, for the rest of the week, guys, nothing too special though going forward. I will be continuing with the risk off, uh, you know, sort of trading pattern that I've had in the last couple of weeks and months. Again, you know, we've seen things in the news again over the past few days, guys, about, you know, where we're heading with the coronavirus cases in the US. We're going back up again. Um, we've had spikes, outbreaks of Florida and uh, Arizona, Texas, and Texas hospitalizations are at a, you know, a record high at the moment. I think it's going to spook the markets a little bit. Beijing is still having another outbreak. I think we're going to see some sort of um, maybe a little bit of risk off for this week, you know, a little bit of safe haven buying. So I'm going to continue what I've been doing. I'm going to short, I've still got the short small, very, very small. I closed out most of this position on Friday, but I just left a little bit running just to see what would happen. Uh, Aussie yen. I'll probably sell more, you know, we'll have a look at what happens. I'll do another video on it tomorrow. I'll show you where I took the trades and what I did with it. Uh, Euro Aussie is another one that interests me as well. I probably might buy some Euro Aussie. I like it for, you know, a bit of risk off um, action as well. I mean, um i'll yeah again i'll do a video on this tomorrow guys i'll talk to you about what trades i've taken and where i've gone with them and what the sort of plan is for the rest of the week but uh yeah that's pretty much it for the video guys if you liked it uh, as i said like and subscribe down below i'd really appreciate it and um yeah i'll talk to you tomorrow thanks for watching Bye bye